taking a little break from our walk that we're having back here in the woods, Luther and I, sitting on this big rock here where we're at. And I uh, got to thinking about something that an atheist cannot do. I've uh, dealt with atheists many times over the years. Every single one of them, one of them has a problem with the God of the Bible. They'll read through the Bible and they'll pick out select passages where, you know, the children of Israel go and they do dastardly things and, and uh, the Lord doesn't destroy them, doesn't punish them all and whatever else. Other times he does. And they say, look at this inconsistent God, this is how cruel he is and all this other stuff, how terrible. And, uh, you know, God's such a good God. Why does he allow suffering? Why does God allow child abuse and why does god allow murder and 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 uh they wouldn't say abortion <laughs> most atheists are for abortion against murder but for abortion figure that one out but um why does god why did god allow slavery it's terrible it's a terrible crime it's terrible horrible uh well they just kind of missed the fact that uh most ancient cultures practiced slavery uh including in africa the africans had Slaves of other Africans. <laughs> Go figure that one out. But uh, it's called one tribe conquering another and instead of killing them all, you say, okay, you're going to come and be my slave now. Uh, it's actually an act of mercy. Bondage. Um, they're slavery. Uh, up until the 19th century, nobody thought slavery was wrong. It was actually a, a good thing. Uh, instead of being killed, you get to go and you serve the different people. And every different race out there, different nation, they all practice slavery, so. But uh, the moral people of today, boy, they sure are so much better. But what can't the atheists do? Atheists cannot judge God and say God should have this and God should have that without taking away free will. God should have stopped slavery. How would God do that? Let's write it out to take away free will. Hmm. God should have stopped child abuse. Take away free will. God should stop anything evil that happens in the world. Then people don't have a free will. So if an atheist were to take God's place, like that could happen, but let's just say that it, for the sake of argument, an atheist takes God's place. You know what the atheist would do? That atheist would make everyone conform to exactly what they think is right. There wouldn't be any free will. There would be no chance to suffer because the atheist would say, I'm eliminating suffering. Uh, kind of like the communist uh, Russians that killed 60 million of their own people in the 20th century. Uh, the Stalinist purges and things like that. Uh, they were atheists. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to create the perfect society and all we need to do is kill a bunch of people. <laughs> Good one there, atheists. And how about the uh, communists in China? The destruction of the Chinese people through atheistic communism. See, they take away the free will of the people because ye can be as gods, knowing good and evil. We are the gods. We, there is no God. The Bible's not true. We're going to take the Bible away from the people so to show how our superior intellect can figure out what's right and wrong. And look what happened. The worst killings in the 20th century were from atheistic communism. Huh. And um, you know the funny thing too about slavery? Let me just say this. Um, slavery didn't go away. It merely changed. It's morphed a little bit. Um, we call it uh, backed securities, mortgage-backed securities, commercial mortgage-backed securities, student loan um, Oh, I can never think of the A one. S L A B S. Student loan something backed security. Huh. Car loans. All these different types of loans that you have. And what do they do? Oh, they make you a bond servant. That's what they do. So, oh, no, come on, you're not bought, you know, on a slave block and whatever, and you have to go work for the slave owner. Well, you are working for the bank that issued you that. Uh, mortgage-backed security, and your name is on that contract. That's what it means. You are a mortgage-backed security. You are a surety for a debt. So uh, before you get all 
holy and righteous and everything else and speak against the God of the Bible, you better realize that uh, actually slavery still is here. So why, why isn't God stopping it? Because of free will. God will let you do what you want. You see, nobody's ever going to get there to heaven and God will say, hey, you know, I predestinated you for hell. I created you for hell. No. Everybody gets a chance. At some point in time, everyone denies. They reject. They reject the message of the gospel. That Jesus died for your sins. Oh, you don't like that, do you? Atheists, they hate that. Well, I'm not, I'm not that bad of a person. I'm better than God. I, I can see things that were evil and I wouldn't have let those things happen and if I was God. Uh, I doubt that. And who are you to sit there in your little computer chair and judge something that happened thousands of years ago when you weren't there? But, uh, you know, atheists really are just God-haters. They're Bible-rejecting, God-hating, reprobate, wicked sinners. That's all that they are. I don't have a whole lot of respect for atheists. Uh, really not... A whole lot but um there comes luther uh, he's here by me now but uh just want to make a quick little video on that issue um every atheist out there if they had their way they would take away free will every single one of them i've dealt with them for years they're all self-righteous i'm not that bad of a person i don't need some god to die on the cross for my sins you a sinner? No, I'm not a sinner. I reject the whole notion of sin. I reject the Bible. Why would I need a savior? You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, but here's the problem. There are some atheists that do watch this channel. And uh, I know YouTube likes to shadow ban everything I do pretty much. But uh, the truth still gets out there. People can share these videos and whatever else. And so for the atheists that are out there that are watching, I know that... Uh, you know that I'm not like other Christians, and so you come here and you want to see what the nutty guy that walks through the woods with his camera has to say. Um, I mean, I guess I should be, you know, in a multi-million dollar church building or, you know, university lecture hall or something, then I'd have more credibility or whatever. I doubt it. But uh, the problem is that uh, the Bible teaches the imminence of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. And what happens is, if you continue to reject the gospel, and you say, well, you know, I, I just, there's too many questions I have. There's too many contradictions. There's too many things, stuff that's wrong. And, I, you know, okay, yeah, I understand the guy made a good point there. But, you know, I just, no, I'm not going to go along with it. You can get to the point where the Holy Spirit will no longer call you. You see, the only way for you to be saved is for the Holy Spirit to prompt you, to call you. God, in His love and His mercy, He says, how about that? You start to feel that little conviction of sin. You start to think, huh, what if it is true? Uh, no, no. But what if it is? You know, it's, huh. That's the Holy Spirit convicting you. And unfortunately, a lot of people, they, uh, they don't listen. And they get an attitude and they'll get bitter towards God and they'll, they'll attack God and they'll attack the Bible. Look at all this horrible stuff that happened in there. Look at all these things and whatever else. I, I mean, I wasn't there. And I guess you can't really say I could judge properly because I wasn't really there. Uh, you know, and things. But, but I still am bitter about it. I'm still angry about it. And I had a bad situation happen to me in, in Sunday school when I was a boy or a little girl or whatever and uh, I'm bitter about that and the Lord says uh, okay not wanting to get saved no all right I'll uh, I'll check back some other time and you know what sometimes God checks back I've heard of stories where people rejected the Lord and um, later on they get saved but then again I've heard of other stories where they reject and they're killed in an accident. Hmm. The Lord said, uh, you had your chance. You had your one opportunity. 
So well, I was raised in, in church buildings, so I must have rejected the gospel many times. Oh, I doubt that because most church buildings don't preach the gospel. <laughs> most church buildings, they preach a false gospel. And if you have any sense, you know that. But uh, my advice to you out there is that you get things sorted out. Understand that this world is a very vile, horrible, wicked place, and people are no good. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I know that just goes against you. you just, uh, just I hate that sound. All have sinned. All. Uh, uh. I don't like that. Uh, well, you better grow to like it because it's the truth. And you better drop your self-righteousness. You see, there's coming a day when uh, the supernatural realm is going to become visible. The Bible says that uh, the mystery of God will be finished in the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. You reveal something. Jesus is going to reveal himself to the world. And you say, well, then I'll wait for that time. I'll wait and I'll say, okay, there he is. I see him. All right. He's a real thing. Okay, I guess I'll have to get saved now. I have no choice. Well, uh, that's not exactly true. Because you see in the book of Revelation, there are people that look up to heaven and they see God. They see him up there. And they're pointing up to heaven and they're blaspheming him. They hate God's guts even though they can see him. And you know, Atheists will do this thing. You and your sky wizard. Oh, your sky god, your wizard, you know, whatever. He's up there. and he, Well, he will be eventually. He's not a wizard, but uh, he's going to be up there. You're going to see him up there. And the Bible says that uh, men's hearts will fail them for fear because of the signs of heaven, the things that are coming upon the earth. People are going to be very scared. See, right now you can say, well, it's always been bad. And, you know, okay, yeah, there's war, World War III and everything. But I won't come here to where I live. I live in a safe area. You know, everything will be fine. This has been happening for millions of years. You know, people have been around. There have been wars and... You Christians are always fear-mongering, man. Oh, well, we'll see. We'll see. If you're right, evolution teaches that things will get better. So there will be some wars and some skirmishes, but it will, you know, it'll eventually clear up and it'll get better and better as time goes by. And then you can say, oh, yeah, Christianity was nutty. But uh, if I'm right, then things are going to get worse. See, you know, you can do the thing of the well, you know, what do I have to lose if I'm wrong? You know, I lived a good life as a Christian. And, uh, and if you, you know, what if you are wrong as an atheist? Uh, you know, an atheist have some kind of name for that. I forget what it is. And uh, come up with these little terms. Uh, you can do that. But that's not the real one. The real one is, what if you're wrong about the future? What if people really aren't getting better? What if people are getting worse? Huh. That's something to think about, isn't it? Yeah. Because you see, if people are getting worse, then that means that there's going to probably come a point in time when you're going to be killed. You're going to be hunted down like an animal. And what if organized religion takes over America? You know, I don't know, like the uh, Catholic Church comes to power and they say, you must be part of the one true church that Christ founded. You must uh, come and be baptized and go through the uh, confession, auricular confession, and you must join the church. What if I don't? Then you'll be killed, heretic. You say, well, come on, that won't happen. It's happened before. You atheists are worried about uh, organized religion, aren't you? You should be. You should be. And uh, you say, we'll have atheists um, have they been murdered by organized religion? Uh, I don't know. I think most of them probably have not been, been uh, rounded up and murdered by organized religion. Because quite frankly, when the organized religion shows up, the atheists very quickly join when it's time to convert or die. Uh, you have the Vikings, the pagan, the heathen Vikings. And what did they do? Uh, well, they kept on serving their pagan gods, but they joined the Catholic Church for money and good positions, you know, and government and business and whatever else. 
like a lot of you atheists will do when the time comes. You will. Oh, trust me, you will. Uh, the time will come when you can't hide behind your little computer screen. Organized religion is going to be knocking on your door. But wait. Wait if, if you uh, don't want to live by faith and you want to live by sight. Then just wait around. You'll get your opportunity. So, just a little woods talk and walk here. A little rant. And, um, you know, again, you get to be, a, you know, saved, you get born again. It isn't some kind of a thing where you have to go and, you know, uh, have other men hug you at some kind of church building or something like that. And this sissy little, oh, I just want to talk about my feelings here this week. <sighs> that stuff is disgusting to me. <laughs> um, you get saved, truly born again, and um, God will put you into some kind of a ministry of some kind. And uh, he'll put you through the ringer, believe you me. And um, you'll realize that you're not part of some kind of a sissy little cult or some kind of a thing like that. You'll realize that you're in the company of some of the greatest men and women that have ever lived on this earth. And you'll realize that uh, why God allowed certain bad things to happen in the Old Testament. It'll start to make sense to you. So, I do hope you take heed to my words here. Think about some things. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.